What's up YouTube? KS Gun Guy here. Thanks for joining me today as always. So I'm excited to bring another episode of the If I Could Only Have One series, and this one being between the Smith & Wesson Shield 2.0 and the Sig Sauer P365. Now, a lot of you guys were requesting this in my last video between the Glock 43 and the P365, so I really appreciate that. I definitely try and read all of your comments and respond to them as best I can, uh, usually within a day or two. Now, you guys also left some other comments as well, and I definitely heard them. You guys were saying that it's not fair to compare a gun like the Glock 43 versus the P365 because the 43 has a pretty long-standing reputation for being reliable and durable. And to that, I say, I agree. However, for a video like this, I have to take that off the shelf. And the reason is oftentimes with these videos, I'm comparing a pretty new gun to the market. So it's not really fair to compare one that's got a good reputation or even a bad reputation versus one that's new to the market. Uh, so again, I, I take that off the table, but you know, we all know what the reputations are or uh, have some good ideas. So we'll leave it at that. Now, as a reminder for the If I Could Only Have One series, of course, we're going to be taking a look at a few specs and some of the key features of the firearms. This is not a deep dive like the original videos for any of these. We'll be taking a look at shooting, of course, along the way, and uh, we'll take a look at the triggers and compare them. There will be a caveat to that for this particular video. And then I will announce a winner. And of course, both of these guns are fantastic. I think if you're looking at either one, you're interested or own either or both of them, you're doing great. This is just an opportunity to take a step back and challenge myself and perhaps challenge you to say, if you could only have one, which one would it be and why? So again, that brings us to today. And just for the sake of argument, we'll make sure that both of these are unloaded. Every once in a while, somebody leaves me a comment and says, don't do that, don't treat us like children, we know they're unloaded, which I appreciate. However, just for the sake of argument, I'm doing it anyway. All right, let's take a look at the specs here real quick. Uh, from a length standpoint, it's gonna be 6.1 inches on the shield versus 5.8 inches. The height is 4.4 inches versus 4.3 inches. The barrel length is 3.1 inches versus 3.1 inches. Now we'll take a look at our width here, give you a good look at both of those. For the shield, it's 1.03 inches versus just one inch on the P365. And then the weight is 20, 20 rather, 0.21 ounces on the shield versus 17.8 ounces on the P365. Probably the biggest difference between the two being the weight. All right, uh, capacity, we are looking at seven rounds for the flat magazine for the shield. And as a reminder, of course, the shields also come with an eight round magazine with a slightly extended base plate. So it's actually pretty good capacity for a single stack firearm. Now, when we get to the P365, and you guys all know this by now, it's got 10 round magazines. Now it does come with a flat base plate magazine, kind of like this one, give you a good look at that. And then an extended base plate like this. However, it doesn't add any rounds to it. It's still a 10 round magazine. What they have come out with, however, now is a 12 round magazine that continues the, uh, the grip texture and all that kind of stuff. I've had an opportunity to test this just a little bit, and I will say it's pretty awesome. In fact, um, I would say it's as awesome as the eight round magazine on the shield because it really fills out that grip nicely. Uh, so both guns have some nice options to uh, get just a few more rounds and a little bit more grip on there if that's something that's important to you. Now, of course, both of these guns are going to be polymer, striker fired, uh, steel on top with various finishes, uh, whether it be Nitron or the uh, Armor Knight. I think it's Armor Knight finish on the uh, Smith & Wesson. So um, from that uh, standpoint, there we go again. I'm saying it again. You guys like to give me trouble for saying standpoint. Can't help it. I say it all the time. Uh, but, uh, but again, both of these guns are very similar. So we'll take a look at a couple of key features of both of these. Um, again, not a deep dive. Now, being the Shield 2.0, there are a couple of changes that they made to it. Uh, probably most uh, substantially is gonna be the grip texture, and hopefully you'll be able to get a pretty decent look at that. I would classify this grip texture as somewhere between medium aggressive and aggressive. It definitely has some bite to it. Um, you're able to keep your hand very well planted uh, at the range while shooting this. Uh, I haven't found a problem with that at all. Now, this is basically a primary 
primary carry. Now, I also carry the 2.0 Compact, but uh, uh, but the Shield's been a carry, and uh, this texture has not bothered me one bit, uh, whether it be with a t-shirt or anything like that, or even clothing tucked in. The clothing hasn't been damaged at all or anything, so this texture, it, it, to me, in my opinion, is perfectly servable from a uh, carry uh, perspective. Now, uh, it does have a slight indention on the magazine right here, so if you have to uh, take out uh, the magazine for any malfunctions or anything like that, it's got a little bit of a lip there, which is really nice. However, it doesn't protrude from the grip, so it doesn't stick out. It's not like an extended uh, magwell or flared magwell or anything like that. The magazine release button is going to be, it's a steel button, but it's got a polymer cap on it. It's got a little bit of texture right here. And I've often said that the uh, the Smith & Wesson M&P line in general, I think they have fantastic mag releases. Not only are they very positive, but they're also easy to get to. I really like the placement and the feel of them. Uh, they're bigger brothers uh, for the 2.0s. They actually have, a, it's all steel there. So in case you're wondering, now, uh, it does not have any sort of a safety, although you can actually get a thumb safety with uh, uh, with various models. They also have lasers and that sort of thing. Uh, this is kind of the plain Jane version. Now, it does have, of course, a, a slide lock or slide release. It is not ambidextrous, as you can see, uh, but it does function just fine as a release. It's got just a little bit of texture on it. Hopefully, you can see that a little bit. It's, it's pretty faint, but it is definitely there, and it works just fine. And uh, takedown, it's got the takedown lever. And one unique thing about the shield, and I don't generally take these down in these types of videos, it just takes way too long. Uh, but uh, but there's actually a little kind of a yellow lever in here that you can flip down and then take your slide off and you don't have to pull the trigger. So if that's something that's really important to you, you don't wanna uh, pull the trigger before you take a gun down, this does have that option, which is pretty cool. Now, uh, I mentioned lasers and such uh, before. This does not actually have an accessory rail. You have to actually buy the gun that has uh, the uh, laser already on it, unless you go with some aftermarket company that might attach to uh, part of the trigger guard here. But again, no accessory uh, rail for any chainsaws or lasers or anything like that. So let's go ahead and take a look at the P365 uh, grip, and I'll actually say grip frame or grip module for a reason. Uh, one of the things I mentioned in the original video, this actually does have a modular trigger system. So the trigger itself is the serialized part and you can remove it. However, from what I understand, SIG is basically saying, don't do it at least for the time being, but that means perhaps down the road, there will be some, uh, some other modules, grip frame modules that maybe are a little bit bigger or different colors or something that you might be able to go with. So who knows, we shall see what happens. So the grip texture on this to me is very reminiscent of the X series of firearms like the X carry or the VTAC or the X5 and I think it's outstanding. It's very comfortable. It's got a little bit of a bite. I would definitely say this is more medium aggressive. It's not terribly mild, but it's a little bit more mild than the shield. But I found that uh, that uh, shooting this gun, it's perfectly fine. It definitely doesn't get out of the hand and being such a small gun, that's definitely a concern. But this grip texture, I think is just perfectly fine. And uh, I think it looks really good too. It makes it just a little bit darker and it uh, calls it out a little bit. So uh, good on SIG for their grip texture. Now it also does have a lip right here to clear any malfunctions just like the shield does. So uh, same accessory. Now you'll notice, however, that uh, they've actually brought in the undercut like they did with the X series here. So it allows you just to get a little bit further up on the firearm, which is fantastic. Um, I really like that feature. It makes it just a little bit more comfortable and also makes it a little bit less blocky. They've also tried to um, burrow this out, however you want to say, uh, the back of the grip frame as much as possible, again, to allow your hand to ride up on it as, uh, as high as, as you possibly can. Now the magazine release button, it's just a standard, kind of like a P320 magazine release button. Now, unlike the shield, this one actually is reversible. Um, it doesn't come ambidextrous out of the box, but you can flip it around. So uh, good on SIG for doing that. That's about as far as the ambidextrous qualities go with this, however. It's slide lock, slide release, and once again, you can use it as both. It is not ambidextrous out of the box. And then takedown, it does have a takedown lever similar to the shield, um, and uh, it's actually very easy. You do not have to pull the trigger trigger on this, which is really nice. Um, I did take it apart in my initial video. So if you're curious about the takedown, how to do that, be sure to check out that uh, first video I did on the P365. Uh, but again, really from a servicing standpoint for, for both of these guns, takedown, cleaning, maintenance, that sort of thing, they're both very easy. Um, I can't give a leg up to one or the other for that. 
Now, this one does have an accessory rail for lights, lasers, chainsaws, grenade launchers, whatever you want. However, it looks a little bit different than a lot of the other firearms out there, and you are exactly right. This is actually proprietary. From what I understand, SIG is going to be coming out with some different accessories to be able to hang off this rail, but it's not something that uh, would necessarily accept aftermarket accessories, at least for the time being. I imagine some company will probably get wind of that and give it a try. So that's uh, really it. Um, I guess there is one other thing. There's a little bit of a thumb indention on both sides here again, just to add to some of the, uh, the ergonomic qualities of this firearm. But that's it from a grip standpoint. I will say really the both of these guns ergonomically, I think they're both great. They do it a little bit differently, uh, but I think they both feel really good in the hands. Now with the P365, um, one thing might be if you have really, really big hands and my, my hands are just large. I wear large gloves, nothing special. Um, if you have huge mitts, the P365 might be slightly more of a challenge for you than the shield, but uh, but that's entirely up to you, of course. Um, I, I haven't had personal experience with that, but just some of the feedback that I've received on it. Let's take a look at our slides for a moment or two. Uh, and again, being the 2.0, one thing that they did a little bit differently, of course, it's got rear serrations, those fish, uh, fish scale serrations. I really like those. I think they look good. Uh, they are very positive. They've got a lot of traction on them. They carry that forward to the front here just a little bit. Now, I would say this is more for aesthetics than anything else. However, uh, in a pinch, you could probably do a really short press check if that's something of interest to you. Otherwise, it's basically the same uh, shield contours as it as it has always been and um, I, I like the shield I think the shield is a good looking gun I think it's uh, relatively plain and simple and that's really what it needs to be I'm not quite as fond of this white printing on here that says uh, it can be fired without a magazine which is unfortunate but uh, <laughs> but aside from that I mean I think they're just really solid looking guns so sights. Now you guys all know that I switched these out for some Ameriglow dot sights not too long ago. I did a review on that. It's somewhere in the video library. Um, so uh, so I can't quite uh, compare this, uh, fairly at least, to the 365. More on that in a moment. But uh, but even out of the box, shields come with reasonably decent quality steel white uh, three dot sights. They're not bad. Now one thing, uh, these do have the ledge on them. Uh, the, uh, the out of the box sights do not. So it's about the only major difference between between the two, but at least it does come with some steel sights. That's something that I always knock Glocks on, and I did in my uh, G43 video versus the P365, and I had a couple guys give me trouble for that. I just believe that to be true. Steel sights, at least, I think are mandatory, especially for carry guns. So take that for what it's worth. That's basically it on the slide for the shield. Now, the 365 does a couple of things a little bit differently. First, you'll notice that the finish on this is much more matte than the shield. It's less shiny, um, so maybe not quite as many fingerprints, that sort of thing. The other thing that's really nice about this finish, especially coupled with the front and rear serrations, it makes for a really, really grippy surface. Um, that's something that I really like, and I think that's really important for firearms, especially if you do uh, any press checks or overhanded racks or anything like that. If you don't, perhaps it's not as big of a deal. Um, uh, but uh, but I really like that feature with the P365, and like the shield, it's it's pretty uh, plain Jane. There's not a lot of bling going on with these guns, which I like uh, on both of them. Quite frankly, there it's not terribly busy, not a lot of logos screaming everywhere, and the P365 even more so than the shield. I mean, it really is uh, just uh, just pretty plain, and uh, that's really all it needs to be. I like the look really of both of these guns very well. So the sights on this, now here, this is a little bit different. This actually comes out of the box with these SIG X-Ray sights, and I'll give you a good look at that because these are high def sights out of the box. They've got that uh, green ring right there that uh, really calls your eye to it. And then of course, it's got tritium inserts all the way around. I love these sights. Uh, they're the same type of sights that uh, you can get with the uh, the X-Carry and the Legion series as well. So good on SIG for including this. Now that also begs a question, and that's pretty much it for the specs, by the way, or the uh, features. Let's come down to cost here for just a moment or two, because the MSRP on the shield is $479 versus $599 on the SIG. And I know some of you guys have really given SIG a little bit of trouble for that. I totally get that. I totally understand. However, people are generally finding the P365 right around $500 to five and a quarter thereabouts, depending on where you look. Now, the shield you can sometimes walk into for around $400 or even a couple of dollars less than that. So there definitely is a difference between the two. A lot of it comes down to what's more 
more important to you, whether it's capacity or good quality sites um, or any of the different features that are going on here. So um, the price is definitely going to be a little bit more on the SIG. Take that for what it's worth. I'm not saying it's better or worse, but I would have to say the Shield kind of wins it a little bit in the price category. Um, I, I, I give the nod to that. So again, that's it from a specs and a feature standpoint. Let's go ahead and take a look at a little bit of shooting and see how these guys do. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that footage at the range. From a shooting perspective, both the Shield and the P365 are a ton of fun to shoot. They're both very reliable. They're very accurate, far more accurate than I am, as you can tell. Uh, but they are just a ton of fun to shoot, and they both accomplish the same job. Now, these are basically up-close and personal guns. I think we all uh, pretty much agree with that. I will share with you, I had a comment about uh, the Glock 43 versus the P365 video, and uh, somebody was saying that uh, the Glock 43 can shoot at 50 yards and the P365 can't. Well, I don't know if that's necessarily true or not, but I also asked the question, why are you shooting these guns at 50 yards? That's just me, just uh, just my perspective on that. Um, take that for what it's worth. But again, they are a lot of fun to shoot. Now, I attribute uh, the, the shooting uh, success with both of these to the ergonomics. Now, I said before, they both do it just a little bit differently. The Shield has that fantastic grip texture, and I think the Shield just fits really well in the hand. I mean, it really does. Um, um, it feels good. It sits well in the hand. It's ergonomic. Um, I, I just, I really enjoy shooting this gun. It's a lot of fun and I have a lot of confidence uh, in this gun, whether I'm carrying it or just going to the range and having a really good time. 
Now the 365, again, doing the ergonomics a little bit different. I will say, however, the ergonomics are, are spot on. I mean, it really feels fantastic, especially considering how small of a firearm this is. And it is basically all around a little bit smaller than the shield, not by a lot, but by a little. It's, it's outstandingly ergonomic. Now, one thing I've said in uh, both of my other videos with this, my grip does have to change a little bit. Now you'll notice that my thumb is basically resting on this faux accessory rail. That's because when you typically grab a gun, a lot of people want to grab it and they, they do one of these things, or they shove both of their thumbs against it. In fact, I was watching a video and a, a guy was shooting the P365 and it was uh, failing, to, uh, failing to do a lot of things. And his grip was basically this. I will say, if you're going to have a 365 and you're running your gun like this, it isn't going to work. It's not going to work very well. It's not going to be reliable. It's not going to be very much fun. You do have to keep your hands off the slide. Now, my natural grip is actually to have a floating thumb. Um, it's kind of like what Hickok does. Um, I probably picked that up from him many years ago, I will admit. But uh, but it just, it's become very comfortable for me. But that means that this is not impeding the slide at all. And then my other thumb riding against the accessory rail makes for basically a free floating slide. So that allows for a very reliable uh, firearm. I haven't had any issues with this or it's body double uh, across the room right now. So. Again, both of these guns, a ton of fun to shoot. Now, I said I was going to talk about the triggers, but I also said that there was a caveat to that, and there is. You guys have probably already noticed, and some of you have probably already left some comments and left the video by now. Thanks. Uh, but uh, this has the Apex trigger in it with the uh, full duty kit. I did a review on that. It's somewhere in the library if you're curious about it, um, and I do recommend it for sure. But uh, but that means that the trigger comparison is going to be a little bit unusual uh, because this is an aftermarket trigger, and you guys are probably all going to say that's not fair to uh, compete with a stock trigger. Once again, I totally agree. So I have to hearken back to the original shield video and recall that trigger, that standard hinge trigger. Now, one thing I said about that particular 2.0 trigger in this gun, the uh, stock one, it was probably the best 2.0 trigger out of the box I've, I've ever shot. It was, actually was a really good trigger. Um, it was uh, it was light, it was crisp, it didn't have any grit or anything like that, which uh, the M&Ps oftentimes are known for having, I, I have to say, whether you agree or not. So the, the trigger out of the box, at least for this particular gun, was actually pretty good. So I can't really do a like comparison between the two, but uh, but the shield definitely stands on its own for triggers. Now again, I've got this Apex trigger in here and it's fantastic. If you're curious about it, just do a couple of quick uh, pulls with it. Very smooth, it's really nice. It does definitely have some take up on it, but uh, once you get to that wall, it's a nice crisp break. And then our reset, is fantastic. And uh, it's got the duty spring kits in it. Now, one thing about the uh, spring kits, the return spring, it's pretty bold. Um, so it definitely chucks your finger out there. And um, so it's a good exercise for control, but uh, but if that's something that is of concern to you, you can always stick with the stock return spring and then uh, change everything else out if you want. But again, one more time, uh, smooth pull, smooth take up. We've got our break and then our reset right there. It's a fantastic trigger, but again, out of the box, the Shield 2.0 trigger was actually very good. And the uh, 2.0 trigger came in somewhere around, I think, five and a half to six pounds, if I remember correctly. So, so again, a perfectly serviceable trigger. Now, the uh, P365, again, not having any sort of a safety lever or anything like that, one of the really cool things to take up on this is totally silent. Yeah, I went silent there for a minute because it really, it's, it's very smooth. And then you get to a nice defined wall and then you've got your break. Now, um, it definitely has a little bit more uh, travel to go through that break, but again, it's crisp, it's light. Um, this one also coming in right around five and a half pounds. And then our reset right there. And it travels just a little bit further than the shield, or at least it feels like it does because that spring on that shield is pretty crazy. And then you get back out to the start. Once again, we've got our take up, our break, and then our reset right there. The trigger on the P365 is fantastic. Um, I would say out of the Polymer P lineup uh, with the SIGs, I think this is the best one out of the box. Call me crazy if you want, but uh, this one just feels fantastic. And if the other P320s had this trigger, I think it would be just awesome. Um, and I just, I think the other P320 triggers are good, but not quite as good. Either way, the triggers on both of these are fantastic. Again, I've got that aftermarket Apex in there, which is also fantastic. But out of the box, the shield really definitely was serviceable. So guys, we're nearing towards the end of the video. And once again, I said there was going to be a winner at the end of this. 
I've said multiple times in If I Could Only Have One videos that uh, some are extremely challenging to do because I love both the guns. And this is one of those times. These these guns are fantastic, both of them are. I'm, I'm proud to have both of them, and I, I think anybody would be lucky to have either one of them at any time. But for the sake of argument, we've got to uh, talk a little bit about this. Now, as a reminder, both of these have a lot of really good features. Both of them are ergonomic. They both have good triggers. Both have good sights out of the box, although I would give a nod to the X-ray sights. Uh, on the SIG, but then from a cost standpoint, uh, the Shield w definitely wins. It is it is less expensive and they are very plentiful. You can find them just about everywhere. The 365 uh, is a little bit more challenging to find, although I think that will eventually calm down. So the 365 has been a ton of fun. Now it did go back to SIG. I don't want anybody to forget that. I mentioned that at the very beginning of the video. Uh, but uh, but again, from a functionality standpoint, it has been flawless. It hasn't been a problem. And I've got confidence that uh, that, that peening issue is going to stop. Of course, I'll keep you guys updated on that. Uh, but I don't really take into account that this had to go back to the mothership in the very beginning uh, when doing these videos. I just I just don't. I mean, I want to take, uh, take it uh, on the merits of the gun itself and that's pretty much it. If the thing didn't work at all, it would be a different deal, but this functions, so uh, I'm not too worried about that at all. But again, it's ergonomic. It's got 10 rounds in the magazine, which is fantastic. You can do a 12-rounder. That's really outstanding for this small of a gun, and hopefully it will promote other manufacturers to do the same thing. The sights on this are truly killer. They are fantastic. Those x-ray sights are just awesome. I absolutely love them. There are a lot of really good things going on with the 365, and I think SIG is really thrown the kitchen sink at it as much as they possibly can. All of that said, the Smith & Wesson Shield, and I know you guys are probably already writing comments or doing whatever you're doing right now because you know what's coming up. Yeah, oh, hang on just a second. Uh, but the Smith & Wesson Shield is a phenomenal firearm. I think for a single stack firearm, for a small firearm, it perhaps for me is kind of the Goldilocks zone of size. I love that P365 and it's a ton of fun to shoot, but I have to change my grip a little bit with it. I have to do things just slightly differently to compensate for the size as well as that low slide. Whereas on the shield, I can just go to town. I can go and it'll run and it's fine. I don't really have to think about very much. And from a, from a carry perspective, that's really important. I don't have to, I don't have to kind of retrain or rethink anything. And the shield has just been awesome. Its design is, is really very good. The aggressive grip, uh, the fish scale serrations. I mean, it's, it's just fantastic. Um, so I understand that it doesn't have quite the capacity, even though you can do mag guts and, uh, base plates and all that kind of thing you definitely can but even out of the box seven rounds and eight rounds plus one in the pipe to me hopefully would solve most any situation that uh, this particular firearm might run across hopefully it'll never happen knock on wood but uh, but if that were the case again hopefully 15 rounds would solve the issue uh, so at the end of the day, guys, both of these guns are fantastic, but if I could only have one, at least for the time being, I would pick the Smith & Wesson Shield. Now, I'm very curious to know your comments on this, whether you agree or disagree. I'm always looking forward to what you guys have to say. I have a feeling a few people are going to disagree, especially since I've uh, really talked up the P365 quite a bit, and I still will. It's a phenomenal firearm and can't wait to do more reviews with it. Uh, but, uh, but again, I'm looking forward to that, so be sure to sound off down below. Guys, thanks so much for joining me today, and I will see you next time.